All right, we're live. Welcome in. I think that I have gotten this ever so slightly incorrect here, and that's okay. We are working on something for the first time. This microphone will not work on my iPad uh, through the streaming service, so I know that now. And I am glad to have learned that. I appreciate you guys being here. My name is Michael Borky. Different setting. Obviously, my computer is currently going through an update to the point that I could not. I mean, it's still going on. And there is no way that I was going to make you guys wait any longer, uh, possibly even into the night. I don't know. So give me one second. Let me share this. Uh, live now, talking Grove Bowl. You guys are seeing this happen in real time. You're seeing me tweet in real time. Uh, It's as boring as the tweets actually are. Grove Brown. I'm not talking Grove Bull and more. So, uh, this is uh, obviously not uh, ideal. This will record, uh, but it won't. The the streaming service will not let me go live with it, but that's okay. Uh, Again, my name is Michael Borky. Welcome to uh, Rebel Report Live. And let's get into it. So there's a couple of things on the docket this weekend. Grove Bowl, obviously, although it's going to look and feel slightly different. There's a couple of things that we can uh, we can watch for uh, on Saturday in the Grove Bowl. And then, of course, the Do or Die Baseball Series with Mississippi State for Ole Miss this weekend. We had a little bit of fun on the radio show with um, going over how much has changed since the last time Ole Miss won a weekend series over Mississippi State. Hey, Dad was in his 30s, for example. I was just starting at Super Talk. We are working towards a decade between series wins over Mississippi State for Ole Miss. It's do or, it's do or die. I mean, that's what it is. So we will talk about that as well. Again, I appreciate you guys. Being here, I know this looks a little bit different, but I'm glad you're here nonetheless for this edition of Rebel Report Live. Please subscribe to the podcast if you have not already. Wherever you get them, just search Rebel Report, subscribe, and leave a rating and a review if you like what you hear. And don't forget to uh, follow me on social media, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, at Michael Borky, B-O-R-K-E-Y. I'm also getting a text now saying that the, uh, the feed is like private. Uh, I don't know how to fix that, so we're just going to roll with it and uh, live and learn. Hopefully, my computer updates successfully, and we won't have to do it this way uh, again. So, uh, a couple of things. I'll make this quick, actually. We'll do a couple of things, and then we'll get out of here. Uh, what to watch for uh, in the Grove Bowl this weekend. Now, I'd be lying to you, as we talked about the other day. Uh, if I wasn't a little bit disappointed that this is not an exact, uh, not exactly a football game and spring games uh, lately are really not anything resembling a game I think Mississippi State is going to do something that's pretty uh, game-like for example some people still uh, do that some don't there are some um, modern lines of thinking and then there are also some that uh, think that uh, it's still old school, line up and play football, and Ole Miss is obviously going away from that. So the lack of it being an actual game has taken some of the intrigue away. I was frankly really looking forward to seeing Walter Nolan and Prince Prince Lee Manny Ellen and the entire new offensive line, basically, and everything in between for Ole Miss this weekend, and we're not going to get that, and that is a little bit disappointing. Now, I think they're still going to do some some seven-on-seven stuff. They're still going to do practice drills and and things of that nature. So you are going to get some football. But, um, frankly, I'm a little bit disappointed that it's not a a real football game. But we're still going to get some things, and so let's kind of go over what what to watch for. First of all, our first look at Simmons versus Howard. Now, again, it's not exactly the look that uh, I was hoping to get this weekend, but still – This is the first iteration of the quarterback battle for 2025 uh, Ole Miss. Next year's quarterback battle is getting underway kind of this weekend, but at least we get a look at it, right? And everybody's super excited about Austin Simmons in part because he's he's doing exceptionally well in the baseball field right now, and, and that's exciting. I mean, he looks really good, one of the few bright spots on an otherwise really um unfortunate 
team and season for Ole Miss baseball uh, right now. So people are really excited about his upside and his athletic ability. But I think as a result of him being around, people are forgetting about the type of prospect that Walker Howard is. If they're doing some seven on seven stuff, we'll get to see the first iteration of those two guys on the field at the same time. And that is at least noteworthy and uh, and interesting for sure. I'm more curious about how that is handled uh, when the season begins, because obviously Lane Kiffin does not want one of them to leave before a starter is named at the beginning of next season. But football's a physical game. The way Jackson Dart plays uh, the game leads to the possibility of uh, of injuries and, and things of that nature. And so how do you divvy up the snaps if, you're blowing out Furman by 50 or Georgia Southern or something like that. What do you do with the quarterback position in those games that are not particularly close? Do you split reps? What happens if Jackson Dart turns an ankle? Where do you go? That's something I think even starting this weekend that Lane Kiffin's going to have to fight against uh, before the start of next season is showing favoritism for one over the other Uh, unless there's, knock on wood, uh, unless there's some kind of season-ending injury. Of course, you hope that doesn't happen, but um, how he's going to balance these two guys, both with reps and public perception and things like that, is going to be very interesting because Lane Kiffin very clearly um, does not want that to happen. It was the same thing with Sanders and Dart last year. Everybody around uh, the program knew that Jackson Dart was going to be the starter, but he didn't uh, give anything publicly and so I imagine a similar phenomenon is going to happen here so even though it's going to look different even though it's not going to be a real football game still seeing those two uh, for the first time on the field together is at least going to be interesting the other thing since it's not a real football game since it's very nondescript I am uh, going to be watching I what are we talking about here? We don't even know what it's going to look like. However, seeing all the new faces in Ole Miss uniforms is going to be at least kind of cool, right? Uh, For the fans that are going to be in attendance, you're going to get to see Princely. You're going to get to see Juice Wells, although I think he's still uh, recovering from injury. You're going to see Walter Nolan. You're going to see Chris Paul. You're, You're going to see Trey Amos. You're going to see these guys in your uniform for the first time doing football things. So, Uh, From a football perspective, it's really only quarterback battle, and it's really only you get to see the new toys in your uniform, because other than that, it sounds like it's going to be very not revealing in any way, shape, or form from a football perspective, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be that, but what to watch for this weekend from a football thing, quarterbacks and guys in your uniform, and uh, from the sound of it, basically nothing else. But I am also interested to see how this goes. I I was uh, on an interview uh, with a different show earlier today, uh, one out of state, and just asked about it. And um, If they get this right, it's a great idea. I love what they're doing with the students, uh, although I am concerned that the students are not going to be able to make it to the, uh, the baseball game if you're allowing them to have the right field rules in the student section at the football stadium. I'm not totally sure that they're going to find their way over to Swayze as well, but what a great idea that is. Uh, I mean, a way to engage students. I don't know what the liability situation there is, but uh, allowing them to bring their coolers in uh, to the student section of the spring game is an awesome idea. And it just, it's another example of Kiffin and, and people around him in that program, just making practical, but bold and smart decisions when it comes to the way they market their football program and their athletic department. Uh, You've got it in spades with football. You've got it in basketball right now as well, but it's just such a small thing, right? How do we get students to go to the spring game? Well, how do we get them to go to baseball games? Well, they're allowed to drink in the outfield. Why don't we let them drink in the student section? It's that simple. I mean, I imagine that that's the thought process. One plus one plus one plus one. And yet it still turns into something that when I was a student, I absolutely would have done 100% without a doubt. I would have taken a cooler to the student section to watch Joey Chestnut eat hot dogs. I mean, I would have totally been in. So that's a really good start 
it's really uh, a great idea to get people there. You got to meet the meet the players thing for the fans afterwards. It's another great idea to get people there. But what will the production actually look like? We'll see. Uh, I would love to see like a pros versus Joes kind of thing where they let, um, you know, a, a frat bro try to rush the passer. Just little little things like that. Maybe run routes on defensive backs, things like that. If you're involving fraternity and sororities, uh, then do stuff like that. Uh, I think as a society, we need a humbling. There are too many people that think, too many average guys like me that think they can hop in to Augusta National, for example. We got a text into the radio show about somebody thinks that they could actually score well at Augusta National. And it's, we need a humbling. And, and I, I would love to see something like that happen this weekend. Definitely need to see uh, Joey Chestnut uh have a hot dog eating contest with a line of frat bros uh, next to him that's a great idea I, I love it again i was in a fraternity at old miss i would have signed up in a heartbeat to compete against joey chestnut on the football field and a hot dog eating contest love that but uh the rest of it needs to be at least interesting uh, right if you're going to to do all of this and to kind of make a mockery of a spring game Good ideas surrounding it, but everything else has to, to be entertaining as well. If you want people to make this a, a weekend for recruiting visits and stuff like that, a marketing weekend, well, the production has got to uh, match that. Based on everything else that has happened, it wouldn't surprise me if it goes really well because the people in charge uh, right now of Ole Miss football are pulling all the right strings and it's looking really good and they're doing really well. But uh, we'll have to see it uh, to believe it. So. Again, from a football perspective, the, the two backup quarterbacks is really uh, all that I'm, I'm watching for. Otherwise, if they're just doing seven-on-seven seven and practice stuff, it's seeing the, the new guys in uniform and then just kind of kick back and enjoy the show. So uh, we will talk baseball here in uh, just a second. I want to remind you the podcast is brought to you by Advantage Business Systems. Check them out online, absms.com. That is the website if your Mississippi business is in the market for office technology. Check them out online, absms.com. Tell them I sent you. You'll get a complimentary office technology assessment. So you tell them what you need. If it's uh, copiers and printers or mail machines, cloud storage, data security, whatever it is, IT projects, phone systems, doesn't matter. Uh, if it's tech, if it's in the office and your Mississippi business needs it, check them out online, absms.com, Advantage Business Systems. For all of your office tech needs. The podcast is also brought to you by Priority One Bank. Let them make you their priority. We've got 16 locations here in Mississippi, so there's likely going to be one in your backyard. They make you their priority every day with their online banking platform. It's a one-stop shop, so all you need is an internet connection. And you can do whatever it is you want to do with your money because Priority One Bank makes you their priority. Bank with me at Priority One Bank. So, baseball this weekend and uh, i mean i i guess that we, we could do like an in-depth breakdown of the pitching matchups and stuff and, and you know maybe i should maybe it's a mistake for, for me to be not doing that uh, uh frankly I, I think that it's uh, a series that uh old miss and mike bianco must win in, in any way that they can do it mississippi state is really good at the top of their lineup um they come in uh, with a, a couple of interesting weekends. So, um, frankly, they've played a lot better than their record indicates that they have, especially going back to the Florida series. They have figured some things out on the mound. They are um, really good at the top of their lineup, uh, hitting the baseball. And you guys know this, uh, they have – dominated Ole Miss for, for almost a decade on, on these weekend series. So State comes in with a little bit of confidence and, and a little bit of swagger. Uh, Ole Miss is going to have to have much better starts uh, on the mound. They're going to have to play clean defense. They're going to have to situationally hit much better. Those are all things that they have done poorly to this point. Um, look, I, I know that Arkansas is really difficult. It's a tough place to play, and, and at times Ole Miss – had chances to win games in that series, but they didn't because they don't do the little things well enough right now. So um, we could dive into deeper keys if you want. I, I will do that on the radio show tomorrow with Hey Dad. We'll, we'll talk about the pitching matchup. We'll talk about uh, Gerungelo, uh versus Liam Doyle. Uh, I mean, we'll do things like that, but it's, it's really 
Um, I think it's as simple as this. Uh, Ole Miss needs to play a, a clean series this weekend. They need to get better starts on the mound. Uh, they need to find a way to win in any way. Uh, because I think what will happen with a loss in, in this series, beyond just the fact that they have lost seven straight SEC games, they won only six of them a year ago, things are getting uncomfortable. But when you have what's going on, going on with Ole Miss baseball right now, where a lot of money is invested on the team and the team is underachieving, Fans invest in baseball at Ole Miss in ways that very few places around the country do. So you've got that going on. You've got a disaster season a year ago with six SEC wins, followed up with, at the moment, is a disaster start uh, to this season uh, as well, frankly. That's what it is at this point. All of that plus the fact that it is Mississippi State. You guys know me. I I don't think you should uh, ever really – do rival comparisons, right? I think that you should measure yourself against everybody, not just your rival. If you're focused on measuring yourself against your rival, uh, that is a cancerous mentality uh, on a fan base and a program. You should think beyond just one team, especially when it's your um, in-state rival. However, uh, they have owned you. They have dominated you over the last uh, eight years on weekend series. So we were talking about this today and, and a texter was like, yeah, but uh, two years ago, Ole Miss won two of four. So they didn't technically lose the series. And it's like, well, w- when you're doing the well, actually one time they split the four games, thanks to the governor's cup, you lose. Uh, I mean, that, that just goes to show how, how bad it's been, but it being Mississippi state, shines a spotlight on the problems of the last two years. If it goes that way again, I think the, the energy and the, the fan base morale will be at possibly an all-time low uh, in the Mike Bianco era. Anyway, so um, they, they've got to do the little things well, and we'll see if they actually can do that. I'm very curious to see. Uh, what kind of energy the team has, if if the dugout has been able to stay together through the self-inflicted adversity, and uh, what kind of weekend that they can have. Have to win it. It's really that simple. Uh, They have to win the series for a a multitude of reasons, and um, if they don't, things are going to start really getting uncomfortable, really getting uncomfortable uh, with Ole Miss baseball, Mike Bianco. Uh, Does that lead to a change or anything? I, I Simply, I, I don't I don't know. But I do know that um, the way they've played to this point is simply unacceptable. The the way they um, – the energy that they played with uh, against Kentucky in, in particular, especially on Sunday, was unacceptable. Uh, being bad at the little things is unacceptable. And if it doesn't get fixed quick, they're going to lose another series to Mississippi State. And the fan energy is going to be at uh, an all-time low. Or an all-time high, if you want to look at it from the the type of energy that the program is getting. So we'll get to some of your comments now. Again, I'm sorry about the the setup and the audio and and everything. Uh, My computer, it's an old Dell. It's updating uh, because I just got power back. And the updates take like two hours, but they are scheduled to happen um, late at night or early in the morning. And because the power just came on, it just started. And so I'm just kind of sitting here waiting on on the computer to get fixed. So appreciate you being here. Apparently, it was hard to find, uh, but I'm glad that uh, those of you who are here are here. I know this isn't super relevant to sports, but do wins matter on a transcript for sports broadcasting asking for a, uh, a student? So uh, I didn't know you were a, a sports broadcasting student. That's awesome. Uh, Not that I am great at giving advice uh, when you consider what my career is, but if you ever, uh, if you ever need help, if you ever need advice, please uh, shoot me a DM, reach out. I will give you whatever I can give you uh, on that front. So uh, don't, don't be afraid to to reach out if you're in uh, sports broadcasting. So please, uh, please don't hesitate. Pro Bowl games are fine with you. I'm not stoked on this series. You think they could get their Get the stuff kicked out of them. You're tired of being embarrassed at this point. Something has to change. 
honestly true. It's the most confounding thing. Here's another one. I said a while back on this podcast that Keith Carter needs to make a Kiffin hire for baseball coach. I have no clue who that would be, but I'd like Bianco to retire and go out with grace, especially if it continues uh, down this path. Got to see how the season plays out. But again, a serious loss this weekend makes the math, uh, I mean, almost impossible to overcome when it comes to making the postseason. So if it doesn't happen now, it's not going to happen. And then the conversation gets interesting. Going to be a little surprised if Ole Miss gets a game. It's not even that they're playing state and they have their struggles there. They can't beat anyone. Not at the moment. Will Bianco's buyout give him another year regardless? It's possible. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how bad it gets. I mean, they could turn it around and figure it out. and That that would be great for uh, Keith Carter and, and the Ole Miss athletic budget and, and booster money and things like that. But, I mean, what happens if they only win six games again? I, I, I don't know the answer as of this moment. Nothing motivates people more than losing. And it's easy to say the money's not there right now, but, but what if they keep losing? If, if it falls off a cliff and it kind of feels like it's already on the edge of it, does that motivate somebody to earmark money for a buyout? I, I don't know that answer. Uh, it seems unlikely, especially considering what they just had to do with Chris Beard, but never say it's not going to happen in college sports ever. Morale at an all-time low is an understatement. Give it a week. They didn't roll over his contract last year. Yes, but it was a six-year deal. It was a six-year deal. So there's four, there would be four years left on the deal. With basketball and baseball, you always think about the SEC win total first and then the matchup second. With football, it's only eight league games that carry much more weight, so the emphasis is warranted. I hear you. Ole Miss used to run rule teams. Now all you see is Ole Miss getting run ruled. That's the thing. Uh, and, and as Edward points out, like you said on Tuesday, they play decent, you guess, at Arkansas and get swept because the team just sucks, and that's unacceptable. I exactly. That's why they played well and lose. It's it's. You can say that if you're a Georgia Southern fan, if, if Georgia Southern comes to Ole Miss this fall in football and they get beat 42-24, Georgia Southern fans are going to be like, you know what? That was all right. That was all right. They scored some points. They didn't get embarrassed. They were competitive. Like that, That's fine. I, I'm okay with that because Georgia Southern is a group of five program playing on the road at an SEC team, right? That's where moral victories come in. The 2025 football season will possibly have some of that. Ole Miss, I mean, I, I know the portal's there and things like that, but they will be replacing a, a lot, a lot of guys. And so, you know, if if they lose a couple of games, but it's close and you see the young quarterback making some progress and things like that, it, it would lead you to have some perspective uh, in losses. Basketball this year. There was perspective in losses because it was year one of Chris Beard's program and the SEC was quite good this year. So when you lose games, it's like, you know, they, they won 20. The year was a success, right? Not when you're two, de two decades into a baseball program that's funded as well as anybody's program is in the United States with a roster that has a bunch of dudes on it that have NIL income in the seven figures. That is not something that can um, have... Yeah, they played well, but they, you know, they lost, but they played well. It just doesn't apply here at all. They have to play well and win uh, this weekend. There, there's nothing else to talk about. If they don't win this series, Sunday will be a, a very ugly is not the right word, but it will be a, a very ugly day. And what we'll talk about will be difficult for some people. But that's what it will be. I hate that it comes down to just three games in, the, in a sport like baseball, but it's not just three games. It's a season, a few weeks into conference play, four weeks into conference play, five weeks into conference play, and then three games. If Kentucky can be 12 and one in the league, play Ole Miss. Can, can in league play, Ole Miss can be better than three and nine. They should be. 
how is this deal for six years? You thought state employees were limited to four-year contracts. The foundation uh, gives additional benefits in contracts. So the state of Mississippi does not pay Lane Kiffin $10 million. It's like a quarter million, right? Or half a million. And then the rest comes from Ole Miss Athletics and the foundation. So the foundation is not a state institution. And so they can give contracts that are longer than four years. Lane Kiffin's contract, I think it's a six-year deal. Chris Beard's contract is, is like that. Now, that money is guaranteed through the foundation, not through uh, the state of Mississippi. Their contract with the state is only four years at a time. And that has helped them. Like, they've shaped contracts that way in the past, but when you're negotiating against Auburn in football and Arkansas in basketball, you do more foundationally to make sure that they stick around. You've always liked Mike Bianco and still poke fun at his leaving a guy in too long bit, but man, it's so alarming how fast it fell and even faster than Mississippi State did. You expect some good Swayze crowds this weekend, maybe the last ones of the season. Yeah, Saturday sold out. Tomorrow night's going to be pretty darn uh, electric. Uh, pretty darn uh, electric. So, um, well, maybe not, though. Maybe not electric. Might be a lot of people, but might be a lot of people sitting on their hands waiting for something good to happen. Uh, but yeah, that's what makes this conversation so difficult. That's what uh, causes a lot of people to not want to have it and to avoid it altogether is the fact that Ole Miss baseball became what it is because of Mike Biego. And so seeing it unfold the way it has is, especially for people that are a little bit older, uh, that remember it not being good before he arrived and remember the stadium being what it was and, and the interest not being there uh, that that has as a testament to to mike bianco and so it getting to the point where we're talking about being four and eleven you, you know with another series loss this weekend if that happens that that's tough that's that's a really tough conversation for for some people to have and, and i don't blame them but that's the reality that they're facing right now if they win seven games this year in the sec you'll give this podcast a thousand dollars that's how confident you are well i hope for your pocketbook they win more than that because i i would i would reject i would reject that uh, there's no way that, that i would accept that but i uh, i hear you um not looking good right now not looking good right now at all so anyway um thank you guys for being here i know that this was uh, a little bit pieced together but again computer updating nothing i could do so uh we'll be back on sunday uh in the in the big room this time uh we'll be back then and, and next time this happens i'll just go back to to the office to, to give us a little bit better um a little bit better of a setup but anyway appreciate you guys thank you we'll talk sunday uh eight o'clock after the masters we'll see you then